Yo, what up, what up? I'm back at you. It's Mike Card on Mike Card TV. Yes, we're about to get into Missy Yala tonight. It is Saturday night, so you know a sip and chat with Mike. We've been doing this all season with Missy Yala. And uh, tonight is no different. Only thing tonight um, that's different is I'm sipping on Power Aid. Yes, because we got some topics that we need to talk about in this episode. And it has really just kind of put me in a slump and I had to think about a couple of things and just, you know, have a conversation just so I can kind of get my thoughts and stuff together. And um, so I'm going to run you all through this um, Iyana review, but we're also going to talk about a few things and, and raise a few topics. And you all, hopefully you all will get into the comments and start typing your opinions about this thing as well. Um... Welcome all my new family members. I see I got some new family members. Oh my God, I hope you all are just feeling the love and everything. Thank you all for just joining in. And uh, feel free to comment. You know, I'm here. I talk to you all. It's no problem. You know, we go live. We do all types of stuff on this channel. I get a little ratchet, everything. So, yeah, but tonight we got to talk about some issues, and we're going to start with Miss Diamond Reynolds. She is the girlfriend of Philando Castile, um, who is the guy who got murdered by the cops um, with her and her daughter in the car and um, doing a traffic stop and everything. And we'll get into the logistics of that whole traffic stop and stuff. Pretty much she um, went live after the whole shooting and everything. And, um, and, and pretty much explain kind of what was going on in the middle of the situation. And it went viral. And so everybody found out about it, you know, because, you know, the power of social media nowadays is just, just crazy. So, um, she pretty much is, um, you know, want Iyana to help her heal through this whole situation and help her be able to move on with her life and stuff because she wants to move on. But every day she has to live with this whole trauma because she actually physically saw the cops kill her boyfriend uh, of four years right in front of her and her daughter's face. And I can only imagine what her daughter is going through just to even see, you know, her father, you know what I'm saying, um father figure in her life um be murdered right in front of her so you know that and, and she showed a lot of maturity and we'll get into that and the details of the actual shooting you know with her just being such a young um woman herself so you know um she really held it down for her mom in that particular situation and um so pretty much diamond reveals that um they were friends for over 10 years, but they they had been girlfriend and boyfriend for um, four years and everything. And, you know, she um, had met him and she had wanted to pretty much rebuild herself because she met him at a low point in her life. And he helped rebuild her self-confidence, her self-esteem. He pretty much was her rock for her and everything. And um, she just doesn't know what to do since he has been killed because she doesn't know how to get out of this space. So that's why she's here with Iyana. Iyana's like, you know, who are you after, you know, uh, Philando? Who are you and everything? And she's just like, I'm a woman, you know, and um, I feel like I'm a woman that really can't live up to everyone's ex expectations that they, they need me to be and stuff. And that's kind of like... I feel like everybody's like that in their life. They feel like that they are a human and they feel like they can't meet the expectations of every single person in their life. But truth be told, you just got to meet the expectation of who you want to be, who you are, and, and, and who you want to fulfill and your dreams and aspirations. So that's number one to anyone out there that's feeling like that. Fulfill yourself first because it, everything starts with you always. And, um... Iyana's like, you know what I'm saying? You kind of feel like you lost your light and everything. And, 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 and she she admits the whole, you know, she was having a moment of, like I said, the low self-esteem and all that. And she wasn't feeling pretty and everything. And, you know, um, Philando just showed her that she was a phenomenal woman. That she could be the best person that she could be. So, Iyana's like, you know, take me to the day that uh, this whole situation happened. And, um... She's like, you know, it was a normal day. Um, we pretty much was in bed. Uh, we was was cuddling and all that, you know, skin to skin. You know, he woke up. I felt him get up or whatever. So I woke up. Um, they had that connection. And, uh, and 
she was like, you know, what you got going on? He like, you know, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. She don't get a haircut. You know, she like, well, I need the car too and everything. And, um, you know, got dressed and everything. And he went and got his gun um, for the day. And because they live in like this terrible neighborhood. And so he, you know, he goes out occasionally strapped or whatever, you know. But this this particular day, he, he actually carried. It wasn't an everyday thing, but this particular day, he actually carried his gun. And, um, you know, pretty much, um, Diamond, she's kind of, you know, still trying to process everything, you know, and, and she acknowledges that she really can't deal with the day to day and everything of his death. And, and she acknowledges, um, that that day, um, it, 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 it takes a toll on her daily, you know. She she even knew it down to the date of like four hundred and sixty eight days of of him being of him being dead. So you know, and Iyana's like, wow, you're actually keeping track, and um, she's like, yeah, because we was together three hundred and sixty five days, seven days a week, you know, twenty four hours a day, just about if we wasn't at work. So she, she she's like, you know what I'm saying? I still feel that connection with him, and I really don't want to let that go. So she's still in that whole state of denial. She's trying to find her way out of that, and that's the reason why she has Iyanla here on the scene to really help her dig her way out of that situation. So, um, you know, Iyanla just kind of lets her know, like, you know, you can you can build a life out of this and everything, and you're going to have to build a life out of this in order for you to be able to move forward with your life and stuff. So, um, so they go to the next um, topic of the actual scene of the shooting, what actually happened during the shooting and all that. And um, they showed the footage that was actually shown four days after the dang on cop had been fucking acquitted or whatever, they show the actual dash cam footage, not the shit that they did in court or whatever. And I'm glad, Iyanla, you showed that motherfucking raw footage so they can show how the fuck these snakes and shit be doing or whatever out here, these cops or whatever, how they have motherfucking ulterior motives and have fucking hidden agendas and shit or whatever. Because if you didn't see in the motherfucking video, the initial conversation with the motherfucking cops was... You know, oh, these are like two suspects that was dang on in a uh, on a robbery around the area or whatever. So let's pull them the fuck over. When they approached the car, it became, oh, y'all got a uh, tail light that was out. Well, I didn't see no motherfucking tail light that was out. What I think was what the fuck happened was whenever they approached the car and everything, they saw that their daughter was in the back seat. And so they had to switch the motherfucking story up. Real motherfucking quick. And that's what I think happened with that situation and all that. So, pretty much, Philando, he's, you know, they asked for uh, license and registration. Now, mind you, if you look at the video, the cop got his motherfucking hand on the gun the whole time because he's scared as a motherfucker or whatever. He's scared like a punk-ass bitch or whatever. So, he got his hand on the damn gun and the dang on, um, and Philando's looking for, so he looking for the glove department, he looks in the dang on armrest, it wasn't there, and then he's like, okay, look, it's not in there, it's not in there, I got a gun, I'm, I'm concealed to, I'm, 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 I'm permitted to carry, and everything, and the cop just automatically, like, don't you fucking reach for that fucking gun, don't you reach for the gun, so, uh, Philando starts to reach for the dang on gun, boom, 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 he shoots the motherfucker in the motherfucking chest. I don't know how many damn times or whatever. It was just a fucking crazy ass scene. You could tell the motherfucker was scared for his fucking life or whatever. Like it was just, it was just crazy as shit or whatever. And you know, in that moment, I felt every motherfucking bullet go through my motherfucking damn chest because I'm like, shit. You know, I mean, I, I know how I've been in a situation of like traffic jams and stuff, and you get pulled over by a damn cop. Or whatever, and 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 it's just like you, especially being a black man, because you don't know what the fuck's gonna happen. You don't know how they're gonna manipulate the situation and everything. And so I feel every bullet because I I've, I've been in situations where cops have really came at you sideways, and it's like you just being respectful as hell. And that's what I got from the whole Philando uh, Castile situation. He was being respectful and everything, but this cop was so terrified. And everything, he just fucking dang gonna put bullets up in his chest, and and the little girl.
girl, what really broke my heart was when the damn little girl, they showed her getting out of the damn car. I was, I was like, what the fuck? Like, that shit took me the fuck aback. Like, it, it took me aback, for real, for real. And so, um, hmm. Like I say, that I'm like, damn, this little girl just witnessed a killing and everything, and and she had, and then the cop whisked her off or whatever. At that moment, I'm trying to get through this whole thing. At that moment, Diamond, she goes live. She like, uh, uh-uh, uh, I need everything. She's still like, sir, you just killed my boyfriend, sir. I can't believe you just did that, sir. Like she's still being respectful because that's how we are or whatever. Us black people, we don't know no other way but to be fucking respectful when it comes to authority because that's what we have known to to do. Because we know authority has never shown us any kind of um any kind of respect in a situation, you know, in, in most situations, I'll say, not not, not in, in, in all, but in most situations, we know that we're not on our best behavior, we know that any motherfucking thing can happen to us, and we could be shot and killed dead, or whatever, and in this situation, you had a law fucking abiding citizen that was doing everything cooperative, even let you know what the deal was, because if he had a gun, he would have just pulled that shit out and shot your motherfucking ass. But he let you know what was going on and that he was reaching for his shit. And you still motherfucking shot him or whatever out of fear in your motherfucking heart or whatever. So, I, and, and by Diamond going viral, it uh, it allowed everybody to see what was going on. And even after the fact, the cop was still going, I told you to just fucking reach for your gun. I told you to just fucking reach for your wallet, your wallet. I just told you to reach for your registration. And I'm like, dude... Like, don't panic now because the damage is done and everything like that. Like, no. you He told you what the hell he was doing. You you dang gonna discuss that it was a whole nother situation before you even pull him the fuck over. Then you approach the dang on car, it, you turn it into a whole nother dang on story, which is how they always do manipulate a situation, you know, try to find probable cause when there is no fucking probable cause there. Like I say, he was dead fucking wrong in that situation. And the fact that his punk ass got motherfucking acquitted from all this shit and everything, it just shows that it's a real motherfucking dang gone problem with our fucking justice system. It is not built to protect the motherfucking people. Um, and, and if it is built to protect the damn people, it's selective with the damn people that it's protecting. I'm not going to just even put it on black people because that has I have seen it in, in other ethnicities as well or whatever. People pick and choose whenever, but we just so end up getting the short end of the stick where we end up in a fucking body bag. We are predominantly carried away in a fucking body bag or whatever. But other people, they, they, they may get rustled and tussled on, but we the ones who getting shot right here on cameras and stuff. And they say that these whole body cameras and stuff and, and these dash cams are supposed to help out the situation when you see clearly that the situation gets manipulated even still and then they decide to motherfucking release the actual footage Days after this motherfucker was uh, fucking acquitted. So, therefore, he cannot be charged with double jeopardy of the situation. So, this whole justice system is, system is all fucked the hell up and everything. So, boom. Uh, let me tell you another part that really fucked me up in the situation was whenever the dang on, they had arrested um, Diamond and they had the daughter in the cop car or whatever. And the daughter was like, you know what I'm saying? Mommy, calm down, calm mm -hmm. down. I don't want them to shoot us. You know what I'm saying? I wish this city um, was a lot safer. And I'm like, damn, I'm like... This little girl right here had to calm her mama down and keep her mama under control and stuff. Like, for real, for real. So, you know, that really broke me down, too. Because I'm like, damn, like, she she being the rock or whatever. And the mom's being all traumatized. Diamond, she ain't know her head from a hole in the ground. Because, I mean, she, 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 she's, she's trying to stay strong. But, hell, I mean, your, the man of your dreams, your, your lover is just being slayed right here in front of you. Shit. You know, but that little girl... That little girl got a whole lot of strength in her. Let me tell you.
for her to just be able to comfort her mama and just get her mama together. And that mama's like, you know, calm down. Because I don't need you getting killed either. That would, that showed a lot of strength within her right there. So I'm like, come on, baby girl. Good, you know, kudos to you. You know what I'm saying? You were strong as fuck. And I'm, I'm whew, like I said, you a strong sister. And I know you're going to grow up and you're going to do big things or whatever. Uh, so, boom. She pretty much posed to uh, Diamond was like, you know, what do you, uh, what would you say to that cop or whatever that took for Lando's life? And she's just like, you know what I'm saying? You pretty much um, have scarred me for the rest of my life. You've scarred my daughter. Um, you expose us to our biggest fear that we could ever dream about, that anyone could ever dream about, which is losing a loved one. Um that someone as close to you and let alone you losing them in the most traumatic way in front of you. And, and you have just really put a scar on my, me and my daughter's life. And Iyana's like, you know what I'm saying? I want you to know that it's not just you. He's feeling it every day. And he has to sit with that. He has to live with that. He hears the gunshots. He hears the conversation, the dialogue back and forth. He, he's driving himself crazy on the inside and everything. You know, daily just thinking about everything that took place and what could what could he have done better. So, you know, Eon's like, you know, girl, I'm going to I'm gonna get you through this. I'm going to get you through this. And and it's going to um, it's gonna be all right. And, 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 you know, and I hope that damn cop is sitting here feeling every little bit of all these fucking cops that fucking pull that shit and hide behind the justice system and everything like that. All y'all motherfuckers need to burn in hell because y'all bitches is out here fucking up people's lives. And y'all have the fucking audacity to sit here after you done kill a father figure to sit here parents talking about uh, black men don't take care of their fucking kids and stuff like that. No, you fucking killing our ass and fucking locking our asses up over fucking five fucking dang on uh, a five dollar bag of weed or whatever a nick bag or whatever and, and, and fucking talking about ain't no father figures in these children's lives and stuff no y'all need to fucking evaluate this whole motherfucking justice system the whole shit is fucked up it's not set up for our ass or whatever and anytime y'all get a chance to stick it to us y'all motherfuckers do y'all motherfuckers do okay so boom Moving right along. So, Iyala brings on uh, Trayvon Martin's mother, Sabrina. And um, pretty much, you know, it's been five years since Trayvon got killed by that dang on idiot. Um, like, and, and, and she's still dealing with her whole shit, you know. And um, she, she was pretty much brought on the dang on show, so that she can help, you know, Diamond get through her stuff and everything. But she's still going through her own traumatic experience, too. Like, she's taking it one day at a time. It still hasn't healed with her because she wants Trayvon there. And it, I can understand that with any parent and everything. They want their dang on parent to be, I mean, their child to be there. Uh, and, and they want everything to go back to be normal, but it really can't and all that. And she has... um had a loss of uh, immortality within herself because, and, and you know, if you want to go biologically and, and, and a clockwise and everything, the, the parent is supposed to die before the, uh, the child and everything. In this particular situation, the child died before the parent, so she has that loss of immortality. So she, she you know, is trying to get through things daily and daily and daily. And, you know, it's a work in progress. I mean, I can understand that. And and, and you, you want your child to be there. You want them to be uh, by your side. You want to be able to call them and stuff. And you and they're not there. And you know they was there. And if they had not of, you know, it wouldn't have been for some fool or whatever that was scared in another situation trying to trying to think they doing something being a, 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 a safety patrol acting outside of their means, her son would still be there. And um, she just kind of like, you know, there needs to be a change in the justice system, especially with, like, racial profiling and, um, you know, uh, it needs to be um, 
a change because it's not the only time that they racial profile. They do it all the time, man. You know, I spoke to you all the other day about how I was racially profiled at my school by a person of color that looked like me or whatever. And it's just crazy because I guess maybe I was a little darker than his complexion or whatever, so he felt threatened because he was new at the school or whatever. So racial profiling goes not only between whites and blacks, but it's all within our own people that look just like us and stuff too or whatever when you get the uh, 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 changing of classes and things or whatever because people look down on certain classes of people and things or whatever or when you think or assume something or somebody just may look suspicious to you, which is what a a lot of people like to go off of uh, suspiciousness whenever it comes to racial profiling because when you sit and really break down things and you, and you can look at somebody, they may look suspicious. They may be the most politest person in the room, you know, but, but a, a person that's racially profiling somebody, they're just going to look at a book and just judge it by its cover. And that's what a lot of things, that's what a lot of people are doing in these cop situation and in this same motherfucking janitor that was at the dang on school the other day since it was his first week there. And he tried to racially profile me, calling the fucking damn office, trying to figure out, did I work there? You know? Like I say, um... So he needs some training within his damn self, you know, in my particular situation. But in this situation, she's like, you know, they do it all the time. And from the video, it was a racial profile. They like two individuals that just committed a robbery. Okay, boom racially profile and something needs to be done about that um because you know as much as there is um black crime there's a whole lot of crime on other ethnicities as well too so you know and she's also like there needs to be some diversity training within these um and more people need to uh, of, of of different ethnicities need to start coming into these precincts and stuff. So and they just need to get out of this whole good old boy system that they got going on where they hire their friends and their friends and, and they all on the dang on um on uh on the other side of things, you know. Well, they, they they cater to the whole racism part of the, of the shit, you know. Because people let their friends in the good old boy system and all that. So, you know, she's kind of like, you know, some things need to change and more people need to start getting in so there can be some diversity and all that to to, to dumb down some of these uh, people that's, that's, that's scared of, you know, us. So, uh, pretty much... Iyana just kind of lets you know, pretty much, it's it's not just that. Just the U.S. in general is just totally been just desensitized whenever it comes to death. And and, it, and it's the truth because it's kind of like somebody can get killed by a cop. It'll be rallies, 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 and it'll just fade off like, doom or whatever. You know what I'm saying? Like, there's nothing really being done, but it's kind of like... How do, how do you continue to keep rallying and all this stuff and everything and then come to find out you know the outcome before they even go in there, these cops and stuff, they already going to be acquitted because they're going to throw out evidence and stuff or find some type of justification as to why they did it or whatever. To And they just cater to the bullshit. So it's kind of like, you know, that's why it has become a, a little bit desensitized because nothing's being done. Nobody's really being fucking held accountable for their fucking actions and everything. And us on this side, yeah, we rallying and protesting, raising money and all this shit. But hell, on the other side, they looking at y'all like, y'all ain't shit. We gonna continue to do this shit and we gonna continue to get our people off and, and y'all gonna continue to be the motherfucking victims. Anywho, so Iyanla finally... Um, Gets the two women together because Serena, she wants Sabrina to talk to uh, Diamond so Diamond can um, come to some time that she can kind of school Diamond and help her start her whole support system thing. And so uh, Sabrina's just pretty much like, you know, Diamond, I need you to find a support system. I need you to go to some groups, some meetings. I need you to find a friend and surround yourself with positive people and get rid of all the negative people because the negative people are going to keep you in that space and the positive people are going to push you to the goals of where you're trying to be and help you heal a whole lot quicker. And that's just, you know, even if you haven't experienced some type of trauma, she just spoke some whole lot of realness right there and it is what it is and she said everything in that dang on statement. 
encouragement. Surround yourself with positivity and, and, and get away from all the negative people because they're not going to do shit but bring your ass the fuck down. So that was just straight realness right there. That was as real as it could have got. Um... And she just pretty much like, you know, anytime you meet these positive people, you need to take that positive energy with you because that's what's going to help you get through your day-to-day -day and stuff. And, um... You know, you also need to figure out your purpose in, in life now because now that you, this has happened to you and I know that it, it's a traumatic experience, you know, God has picked you to go through this trauma and now you have to be able to find your way out of this slump and figure out what do you what do you do next? What is your purpose? Where are you going to go after this and everything? Yes, you love Philando and all that, but since this has happened to you, how can you push the message out and how can you go out there and help others that are going through and, and help bring a stop to this whole situation? And so that's what she wanted her to help um, help her understand. You know, and, and Diamond's kind of like, you know what I'm saying? It's just an honor to meet you, Mr. Brainer. You've just been such a help to me and all that. So, boom. We move right along. Iyanla brings ex um, cop um, Corey Pangas on the scene. He's old. Oh, he's retired. Um... And um, Iyana just kind of want to know, you know, what do you do with when people, when we just can't really much trust the dang old police because they tend to just dang on manipulate the law to, uh, to suit them and all that. And, um, you know, Corey just kind of like, you know, these police uh, officers, these police chiefs need to start vetting these bad guys out whenever you get a, a sense or an urge or uh, you get a whiff that this may be a corrupt cop, you need to get rid of their ass immediately and not dang on uh, keep them around so they can continue to oppress people and, and do fuck shit like what this cop did. And, um... You know, Iyana's kind of like, you know, where is the humanity and everything and the cops and all that? And do they even have some type of, uh, of, of pulse or whatever, you know what I'm saying? And, and you know, where is the humanity in these cops whenever they're pulling people over? And do they even think about their actions before they even, before they even enforce the law and all that? So... You know, he's just pretty much like, he's started to go on this whole, you know, people need to dang on comply and and, and 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 they need to dang on abide by the law. And so I was like, wait the fuck a minute, dude, you know, and Iyana's like, hold up, you know what I'm saying, you mean to tell me, um, you, your rebuttal is you need to be dang on reply, I mean, you need, need to be complying with the dang on law? And um, she like, that's some motherfucking bullshit because in this situation with Philando, he was complying with the law, but this situation, they ain't gonna happen. So what the fuck do you do there? So I was glad that she kind of got him together because I know all of us was looking at the damn screen like, okay, you about to dang gonna get cussed the fuck out by Iyala. So, um, and she just kind of like, um, you know, with that whole situation, how do I dang gonna go to my grandson and and let him know uh who knows his roots and his uh, his heritage and everything and, and try to tell him to be uplifting and be strong and be proud of his heritage and every time a cop comes around to to lower your head and to bow down and all that out of fear and stuff and you know that was a damn good ass question for her to ask because shit, how do you? Because our parents do teach us to be strong and to be uh, upstanding individuals and to go out there and, and carry yourself a certain way and don't be scared of anybody and, and, and like I say, be respectful all the time and, and be proud of where you come from and your blackness and, and your hair and all that and... and Every time we now we get pulled over or something like that, we got to pretty much fear for our life. But see, that shit goes all the way back to slavery and everything. When they used to sick dogs and shit on us, hose us the fuck down and all that. Like, this fear has been instilled in us and all that. And like I say, some of these people, these little hate groups and stuff like that, they up in these police uh, precincts and everything. And they enforcing that shit, you know. Um... You know, I hate to even bring it up, like, Tyler Perry kind of shows you a little depiction of how corrupt cops can be and, like, um, if loving you was wrong and all that, where they got the cop and he, he up here planting shit. And, like, this shit has been like that for years, and it's been, like, a, a it's, it's been a thing to target certain ethnicities and, 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 and minority groups and stuff. And so... 
like I say, this shit goes way back to slavery with the whole uh, uh, um, uh, being scared of the cops and all that. They 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 have been doing this shit for years and has have instilled that fear in us. And nowadays they shooting us right on camera and everything and getting away with it. So it definitely ain't making the shit no motherfucking better. So um. His response to uh, Iyana's thing about the whole grandson was, you know, tell him to be strong, be proud, let him know that all cops aren't like that, you know, and all cops aren't like that. I got cops, and you know, that I know that are good friends and that, that we went to school together and they're upstanding people and everything, but, you know... Sometimes I do believe people make bad decisions, but I do believe whenever you do make a fucking bad decision, the fucking law needs to acknowledge the fact that you made that bad decision and your ass needs to be motherfucking punished for your bad decision. Just because you made a bad decision don't mean that you get a motherfucking pass or whatever. Period. So, um, you know, he's kind of like the civilians need to stop dang on, um, you know, um, um, giving the cops excuses and everything. Because when the cops get excuses, all the precincts do is they create a little course, send the cops to it. They really don't take to it or whatnot just to be like, oh, we had this kind of training with them and blah, 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 blah. He wants to um, dang on people to dang on, start being holding people more accountable and stuff and stop blaming the cops and all that. Um, Iyana's like, you know, Iyana's like, how do we get these guns out of these damn frightened cops' hands or whatever? And, you know, it's not nothing that you really can do or whatever. You know what I'm saying? Anytime, she's like, anytime a dang on gun comes into a frightened person's hand, it's not going to be good because that person's going to act out of fear. And if you you saw the dang on shooting, the way he shoot, do, 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 like, it, it, he was scared for his motherfucking life. Like I said, the whole time he had his hand held to the dang on holster or whatever. So, um... You know, um, the cop is like, we need to stop dang on um, implementing the courses and we just need to really start dang on holding people accountable because um, that's the only thing that's going to uh, change this whole situation. And that's just the facts because until these cops are starting to get convicted, the death penalty being put in, 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 and, you know, held accountable fully 100% and everything, this shit going to continue to go on. People are going to still feel like they fucking in power that they ain't going to do what the fuck they do or whatever. And I'm just totally sick of the shit or whatever because, you know, it, it, nothing's going to change. And I really feel like that now that we got Trump in the mother fucking office all this shit has been really fucking in 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 emboldened by them they just really feel empowered so like i say yeah i don't see it getting no better no time soon all we can really do as black people is to remain respectful stay with our fucking shit legit tags license and everything because that knocks down the whole probable cause situation and always keep your motherfucking nose clean and don't don't be out here getting no motherfucking trouble or none of that kind of shit you know so, boom. Um, so, um, Corey and Diamond, me and, and, and Diamond, she like, oh, the fucker, because this is really her first time being this close to a cop since the whole situation. So, she's completely apprehensive, and she's just like, you know what I'm saying, when I associate uh, cops, I think cops equal death or whatever, like, point blank, period. It's nothing that you could do to change my fucking thought about that shit. I've seen too many of us go down by the hands of y'all asses. Ain't nothing fucking happened, and y'all have spun this shit to dang on, make it look like it was a fucking victim's fault or whatever. So she's just like, no. And, uh, Corey's just like, you know, I'm sorry you feel like that, but I feel like what you need to do is you need to start reaching out as, as an advocate and be an advocate for this whole thing. Talk to the cops. See if you can reach out to the actual precinct that did all this to you and, and let them um, allow uh, allow you to come in and speak. So, like I say, um, it was good advice that he gave or whatever, you know. Um, he pretty much was just like, you know, you know, they're going to let you speak because they don't want no negative press. And, you know, these officers just start learning how to be dang on uh, human before they become officers. And that's just the damn truth. Because if you are human before uh, an officer, you're going to always keep that compassion first before you let any damn thing else come into play, you know. So you will always come in with an understanding situation before you come in with a I'm ready to act type situation like that cop with his motherfucking dang on gun uh 
uh, his hand on the dang on gun the whole time talking about it's a robbery then switch and talk about it's a fucking tail light punk ass bitch or whatever uh and um you know, she pretty much admits that the police hadn't reached out to her. Now, they reached out to the family, but, you know, not to her. And, um, you know, Corey just like, you know, that cop was scared as hell. And he, he, you know, he acted out of fear. And that's all that was to that whole situation. And um, so they end that conversation and everything. So Iyanla brings in a lady um, by the name of Lindsay, and Lindsay's like a therapist and everything, and she does this whole thing with like the tap away, and it's for Diamond to start tapping away all the different negative, negative thoughts that she has every time she thinks of Philando that brings her into tears and all that. So they get to doing a little tap, 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 they tapping all over the body, tap, 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 and um... It seems to be helping on uh, Diamond with the whole process. And by the time they got done with it and everything, because the whole thing was to evoke uh, an emotion out of her every time they talked about a different topic, because they was she was asking different questions, was for her to, to get it out or whatever and for her to feel more at peace. And so by the end of the whole tap session and everything, you could tell that she had a whole new outlook and she had a whole new, like I say, leap on life. And, and, and you could tell she was starting to glow within herself. So that was the good thing with the tap tap and all that. And um, so, you know, Iyana just kind of lets her know, like, you know, girl, it's, you know, this is going to be all right. Um, now it's time for you to start healing, for you to start moving on with your life and everything. And, um, give yourself permission to be, um, to, to move on and, and not hold yourself in that space and stuff. So, like I say, um, that's what was going on with that. But, um, and that pretty much kind of concludes the whole episode. We find out that, uh, Diamond did receive $800,000 from the police officers uh, and everything, uh, the, the precinct, they paid her, and uh, she's doing actual, uh, actually a whole lot better with the situation. So, um, you know, it, it's, it's, it's funny this whole, she ended the season with this because it's an actual topic that just really needed to be talk about, talked about all the way around. I feel like that Everything that was talked about was something that needed to be aired and people needed to see, hear the cop, the retired cop side of the story. They need to see how it affects people whenever they take on these actions and they say, you know what I'm saying, uh, the law outside of, 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 of the actual um, policies and procedures and how they should be following the protocol and everything. They take matters into their own hand and kill people. They got a chance to see inside of her, how her life and how they pretty much traumatize people for the rest of their fucking life and everything. But, um, I, I just think that, um, the justice system and these judges and stuff, a lot of them need to fucking retire um, a lot of these old judges and stuff that had these old ways, um, that think the way that they do, they're stuck back in the slavery days because, you know, um, a lot of them are bringing those same values and stuff to the courtroom. And that's the reason why these cops are being acquitted and everything, because there's no type of, um, Body seeing the compassion up on the dang on uh, up on the judges panel and everything, and also on the jury box. You know, there needs to be more diversity there as well. Um, and they need to stop manipulating these laws and coming up and creating laws that suit and fit them as they see fit because it's doing nothing but heightening the situation. And people, like I said, are feeling more empow empowered and more emboldened whenever they get that badge and they get behind the sirens and all that stuff to do the shit that they do because they know that if they have, um, you know, the law behind them or they got their good old boy right there, you know, to, to defend them well or whatever, they're going to be able to get off. And it has been proven time and time again with these types of situations. Um, I'm tired of them talking about we need to fucking comply, comply, comply. And um, every time that we comply, we still end up being the fucking victims of being arrested or being assaulted or being downright just motherfucking murdered or whatever. Um, you know, I know every time I get pulled over by the cops, 
Uh, I try to call somebody on the phone or something. I know uh, I used to do that shit with my, uh, when I, back home because I used to get pulled over a lot because of the color of my car and everything. And because um, it was red. And I would immediately get on the phone with my dad and just talk. And I remember one time, like, a cop was like, um, who the fuck are you on the phone with? He didn't say it like that, but it was kind of in that tone. Like, who are you on the phone with? And I'm like, I'm on the phone with my daddy or whatever. Because I was talking to my dad, letting him know what he was saying and everything. He was like, you need to hang up that phone. And I put the phone on speaker immediately. And my daddy was like, I was like, I'm not hanging up this phone. My daddy was like, he's not hanging up this phone, sir. He's not hanging up this damn phone. And I'm like, you know, that's just my, you know, I think that what Diamond did by her going live and stuff was definitely genius, you know, in that moment. Because I never would have probably thought to actually go live in that moment. But, you know, I always call the cop, um, call my um, father or somebody whenever I'm getting pulled over by the cops, you know. And that's, the, that's one of the best things that anybody can do, especially being a person, uh, a minority or whatever. Call somebody on the dang on phone because... You you you're gonna be scrutinized, and you need somebody to hear the other side of the story and everything. If you got a YouTube, Facebook uh, live or Instagram, go live so people can see what's going on and what's being said to you in that moment, you know. And um, but this whole comply, comply, comply shit, like it really needs to dang on stop being a lot of emphasis put on that instead of uh, people need to be understanding on the other side because as we see in the video and in most situations, a lot of us are complying with the law and shit is still being uh, done because people have some type of vendetta or some feel some type of way or they just had a bad day or they just, like I say, just, just looking for trouble that day, looking to arrest somebody or kill somebody or whatever. So... I guess I got a lot of thoughts on this. Um, um, I feel like that the Constitution and everything has... Um, it never was really created for black people or anybody that was not um, of Caucasian descent. Um, that's just my take on it. That's why so many fucking amendments had to be done to it. Um, freedom of speech has never really been... Uh, a thing for black people because every time we get, we try to do freedom of speech, we've always been attacked. And whether it's been a silent protest or anything, we've always been attacked by dogs and things like that. So it has never really, a, a really been a thing for us. Uh, and they need to throw away that whole shit in the preamble talking about we the people because it's not for the fucking people. Um, it, it, it's, you know, it's, it's suitable for whoever it's suitable for in that moment. And people make it uh, manipulate the Constitution and all that shit to make all their unjustified shit just. And, and they just need to then go and get rid of the shit, period, or whatever. Um, let's see. Um, like I said, I would just love to hear y'all thoughts on this whole situation. Um like I say, I'm glad that Iyala really hit this tonight. Um, like I say, we saw the video and everything. We saw the footage. We've saw, seen this shit happen on too many different occasions and all that. But what can be done to better our justice system? What can be done to dang, that we as uh, minorities can do to better protect ourselves outside of abiding and complying with the law? Um, but in my personal opinion, I, I don't think there is anything else that we can do. You know, we got to continue to dang on, you know, be respectful and, and like I say, and ride around illegal, keep doing the, the right stuff and everything and, and don't let, you know, uh, uh, negativity or bad things get into your dang on uh, into your thought process and where you go out here and make stupid rash decisions and stuff that can just give people probable cause to do to to kill you or, or fire off on you and stuff so like i said um i would just love to hear y'all's opinion about this situation like i said we we've seen it in so many dang on uh situations this this was just one of many um Iyanla, you did a damn good job of helping Miss Diamond out. I'm glad that she's able to move on with this situation. Um, 
I'm glad that Corey came on to give his perspective of the situation. Yes, the cops do need to, they ain't gonna be held fucking accountable, period. And still people are starting to be held fucking accountable. This shit is gonna continue to happen, period. And I hate the fact that I, as a black man, has to feel fear anytime I get some blue lights behind me. Like, is this gonna be my last ride in the car? Is this gonna be my last encounter? You know what I'm saying? You know, and are people going to be dropping flowers at my grave site in the next, you know, 24 hours or so? I mean, something just really has to be done. You know, it's, it's, it's good cops and it's bad cops out here. And then we could just, like I say, evaluate everybody and, and, and get the bad cops out and really hold them accountable for the shit that they do because y'all see the shit and, and just they reports and everything. If y'all look at the 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 uh, diversification within the different traffic stops and stuff and see and analyze, are they pulling over this amount of uh, uh, this ethnicity and this amount of this? You I mean, you can kind of find who, who is who within there if y'all want to do some checks and balances within these precincts and stuff. But like I say, I would love to hear from you all. Um, we can get on this topic all day. Um, may even go live and talk about it a little bit or something like that tomorrow. If we can get into that. But um, like I say, you all, comment below. I love you all. Thank you all for just sitting here with me through this whole commentary and everything. It was a really tough topic tonight. This is my longest Iyana review. Uh, I'm glad you all just stuck in here with me Um and uh, like I say, subscribe to the channel. Uh, I love talking to you all. And um, you all take care of yourself. Have a great rest of the weekend and all that. And I love you all. Love you all. Bye.